When Moses ran away from the persecution of Pharaoh, he was told by God to strike the sea with his staff, and then it will split into two. Now, why did God tell Moses to strike the sea with his staff first, and then it will split? God could have easily just split the sea right away for Moses and not have Moses strike the sea at all with his staff, because it wasn't the staff that actually split the sea. It was God that split the sea. So why did God tell Moses to strike the sea with his staff? There's profound wisdom behind the story that I want to reveal to you today. And the underlying topic behind this story is patience. Everyone has this idea that being patient means to just sit back, relax, and just wait for things to happen. This is so far from the truth. I remember in the beginning of high school when I was a freshman, I told myself by the time I graduate, I will be a millionaire. So I had four years and all I had to do was be patient. I finished freshman year and I was patient. I was like, all right, I got three more years left. Sophomore year passed and I was still patient. Junior year passed and I realized I was getting close, but I wasn't even close to my goal at all of a million dollars. And then senior year came and I was still patient. I graduated and then when I crossed the stage, they did not give me a million dollar check, but they gave me a flimsy piece of paper that I don't know where it is anymore. I was fooled by the concept of patience. I thought patience was, okay, I'm gonna set this goal and I'm gonna be patient because I'm gonna wait for it to come to me. This is so far from the truth of what patience actually is. Patience isn't you set a goal and then just sit back and relax. No, patience is you do all the work first and then you're patient for the results to come in. For example, if you want to get into the best shape of your life, the first day you go to the gym, you could work out for two hours, eat the perfect diet that day, drink a lot of water, do everything perfectly correct, but you will see absolutely no results. That first week of going to the gym, you still might see no results. Maybe after a month of weightlifting, doing cardio, eating correctly, drinking a lot of water, getting your sleep in, you might start seeing some results, maybe. This is being patient. Cause after that first day, you could have easily just quit cause you saw no results. But no, you have to be patient. You have to trust in the process. You have to trust in Allah. And you have to remember, Allah is the most just. Always remember this. I know a lot of people forget this and a lot of people say life isn't fair. If you say life isn't fair, then you're saying that Allah isn't fair. Cause life is controlled by who? Allah. When you work hard at something, understand that Allah is taking note of everything you do. So if you're working hard towards something, Allah sees that and you will be rewarded in one way or another. It might not be the way that you thought you're going to get rewarded, but you still will be rewarded for your work. For example, I've had multiple, multiple businesses in the past just completely fail. Each business I wanted the goal was to make money, was to get rich. I want this business to make me rich, but then it didn't work. But it taught me something that carried over to the next business. And the next business did a little bit better than the last one, but then that one failed again. But I learned something new again. And now the next business, I have more knowledge. I'm doing better and maybe that business fails again it doesn't matter i just keep learning and learning and learning until eventually you learn enough to where you have a successful business that's making you money had i quit on the first business that didn't work for me had i just quit right there and said you know what i tried business didn't work that's tough so i'm done with business i wouldn't be to where i'm at today patience is only valid under the circumstance that you've done everything that you could and now you're just waiting for the results to come in like for the example I gave you earlier, you go to the gym, you do everything you need to, and then now you just wait for the results to come in. They're not gonna come in right away. That's not how it works. You might have to work at something for weeks, months, or maybe even years before you see any type of results. For example, this YouTube channel. At a certain point, I was stuck at a certain amount of views and I just kept getting stuck and stuck and stuck. And I was thinking, what am I doing wrong? Because every video, I try to make it better than the last one. I try to make it better than the last one. And I felt like they were better than the last ones before, but the views just stayed the same for a long time. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I'm capped out, this is it. And I told myself, no, I'm gonna keep going just one more video and I'm gonna just keep doing one more video and one more video until something clicks until something strikes literally the next video I posted blew up and that was the video about fear about only fearing Allah that video took off and that just propelled my channel to a place to where it's never been but it's because I was at that brink point anytime you're about to succeed Allah tests you like one final time to see if you really really want it or if you're kind of just doing it like you always hear about successful businesses and they always say like yeah I almost gave up we didn't have enough money to pay payroll but then we just kept going and then boom like the business turned around it succeeded and became a billion dollar business. You need to just keep going and to keep being patient even if the results are not there yet. The results are coming, believe that. Allah is watching you and you will be rewarded. Another example we can give is of Jesus alayhi salam and Mary. In the Quran chapter 19 verse 23 to 25, it reads, Then the pains of labor drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. She cried, Alas, I wish I had died before this and was a thing long forgotten. So a voice reassured her from below her, do not grieve. Your Lord has provided a stream at your feet and shake the trunk of this palm tree towards you. It will drop fresh ripe dates upon you. So look, Mary is in terrible pain giving birth to Jesus salam, and she says she wants to die. It's just too much pain. She can't handle it. Then Allah tells her to shake the palm tree and ripe dates are going to fall from it. We all agree that Allah could have easily just made the dates fall for her right away and she could have ate them and been fine. But no, even in labor, 
Allah is commanding her, shake the palm tree first, and then the dates are going to fall for you. You need to take action first, and then be patient for the results to come in. That's the underlying message I want you to understand in this video. Allah says in the Quran, chapter 13, verse 11, Indeed, Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. You must change yourself first before Allah is going to change you. You need to meet him halfway. It's not you do no work, you sit around, do nothing, and you just hope results come in. That's not how it's going to work. And Allah says in the Quran that Allah is with those who are patient. He also says that he loves those who are patient. So have patience in everything you do. And now patience isn't just doing work and then waiting for the results to come in. Patience is also when calamity strikes. When trials and tribulations are happening to you, you have to be patient. And who is the most patient ever? Most people don't know the answer to this. It was narrated in the hadith. The Prophet wasallam said, No one or nothing is more patient with harmful words he hears than Allah. Verily, they ascribe children to him, yet he gives them wellness and provision. Think about that. The Christians say Allah has children, which is blasphemy. After God gave them everything, they turn around and worship the messenger. And yet God still provides for them, even though what they're doing is absolutely wrong. Look at how patient Allah is. Look at how merciful he is. He could easily just destroy everyone that's committing shirk right away. But no, he gives them time. He gives them a chance to maybe they'll come back to him. Allah knows best. And sometimes disaster happens and there's really nothing you can do. For example, if a loved one of yours dies, there is nothing you can do except be patient. And there's an authentic hadith where the Prophet wasallam said, whoever is patient, Allah will bestow patience upon him. And no one is ever given anything better and more generous than patience. That's one of the best qualities you can have is patience. The final hadith I want to share with you and this one you need to have. You need to ingrain this hadith this is a life-changing hadith, 100%. The Prophet wasallam said, There is no Muslim who is stricken with calamity and says what Allah has enjoined. Verily, to Allah we belong and unto him is our return. O Allah, reward me for my affliction and compensate me with something better. But Allah will compensate him with something better. So anytime you lose something, anytime you go through calamity, anytime you're suffering and you're patient with it and you ask Allah to reward you and compensate you with something better, Allah will give that to you. Perfect example is with Umm Salama. Umm Salama was married to Abu Salama and they were lovebirds. They were, they loved each other very much and then Abu Salama died. But then she asked herself like, what can be better than my previous husband? He died as a martyr. Who can be better than him? So she thought she just wasn't going to get married again. But then the Prophet وسلم, came and asked her for marriage. So look at that. She thought that there was no one else better than her previous husband. And so she thought, okay, well, there's no one better than this. So how can Allah give me someone better than him? And then Allah gave her the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakallah khair for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe down below. All we talk about is like Islam and self-improvement on this channel. And we have a free community down below for Muslims to join. Anyone can join. It's an online community. We just talk in there, try to help each other out. Anyone has questions, we just help each other in there. That's the point of the community. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this one as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.